number one. We're not even going to talk about the Nazi house, the um, naked man house, or the every house I ever showed in Southside that had a sleeping student upstairs. They didn't even make the cut today. Number one, wire fraud. Raise your hand if you've had wire fraud in your vocabulary with real estate. <laughs> No kidding, that word terrifies me, wire fraud. Yes. So April 2nd this year, I get a call that says our cash from my assistant, lovely assistant Brooke, um, our closing that's set for Thursday is not going to happen. Yes, it is. What do you mean? We can overcome anything. No, literally, it's not going to happen. The money has been stolen out of her account. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars wiped, Paige. So the story goes that um, my client was paying a cash transaction, and on Thursday, she gets an email from the closing secretary, and this is not that important, but she had chosen the closing secretary because they had done a lot of business together, and she'll give me a deal. She probably charged me $150 for the closing page. Okay, we'll close with her. She gets an email from her, and I and my assistant is copied on the email. And it's kind of funny language, and there's a couple of misspelled words, but she reads it and says, looks good to me, gives it to her husband. He looks at it, looks good to me, I'm going to go down to my bank and transfer the funds. At 1 o'clock, he goes to the closing secretary and says, here you go, here's what you needed, here's your sheet of paper. And she goes, oh, thank you, honey. How are you? How's mom and them? Puts the file puts the sheet of paper in the file with the wire confirmation, never takes a peek. She's like, well, y'all are really on top of it, but you don't have to show me your proof of funds. That was Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 9 a.m. My buyer sees closing secretary and is like, aren't you so proud of me for getting my money to you so quickly? She's like, what are you talking about? I never asked you to send me money. I figured you'd bring a personal check like you always have. And that is when it hits the fan. <laughs> this one kept me up for nights. <laughs> because when someone saves hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, just think of the time it takes to, to put that away, to save that. And poof, gone. Yeah. Well, it's a current investigation. And the investigation of cross-state wire fraud belongs to the Secret Service Department of the FBI. So you will notice I've not said any names and I haven't even said any specific numbers. We don't know how this is gonna end. Um, you know, in 2016, this was a less than $20 million scheme of all of the United States. And in 2017, it was almost $200 million had been taken from the real estate industry transactions. So. My word would be, just right now, do not have the attitude that I had, that I'm an 18-year I'm an veteran of selling real estate, and I don't even want to hear about those wire fraud stories. I know that could never happen to any of my clients. Since then, we have had a company meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the simple sheet of paper that can possibly save your clients hundreds of thousands of dollars anti-fraud waiver and it's long and it says a lot of stuff and some stuff is bullet pointed and some stuff isn't all you have to do when you meet with them for the first time after you recad them listen to me I will never ever ask you to do anything with your money regarding our closing if you get an email that looks like it's from me my assistant my real estate coach <laughs> my closing secretary or anybody delete it and pick up the phone and call me Immediately, we have gotten in front of any problem with either sellers or buyers, and hopefully, I have just become the expert in wire fraud. What are some other things that you've learned now with this happening um, that uh, can prevent this from happening to your other clients? Well, um, number one, I can't emphasize, because I don't know if when you're oh no moment ever happens that um, 
you know, what your immediate gut does. But my immediate gut goes, oh my gosh, what have I done? How did I mess up? And what can I do to turn this around? And part of the wire fraud, uh oh, is um, you need to know that if your information is out there anywhere, Facebook, direct mail, the roster of the Association of Realtors, those little crazy criminal scammers have everything they need to pretend to be you. They are being so aggressive. I mean, I had the buyer. And, you know, she has since said, fortunately, that wasn't my entire savings, my entire world. I could be destroyed. Thankfully, it's not. But I've heard stories where the seller came to closing. And that morning, they wired their mortgage payoff to some crazy person. They, did, they didn't really get to sell their house that day. What do you do? I mean, I have heard that the criminals now are getting so aggressive that they will literally the criminal, walk into a closing office and go, hey, I didn't want to email that. That's too risky. Here are the wiring instructions. I wanted to give them to you to your face. It is serious. <clears throat> so can I, do you mind if I elaborate on a couple other Ooh. tips there? Okay, so um, when uh, Kent Stewart, a few years ago, we did a video about this because Lynn, we noticed it was starting to happen a lot. He was really trying to get the word out to us as agents because we're the least secure people on the planet because we normally trust everyone. So <laughs> we are pretty loosey-goosey with all of our passwords and uh, most of our passwords are one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, or our husband's name or our children's names. <laughs> so, um, and that's what you're talking about. Like, that would never happen to right. me. Right. We all did that. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that um, my husband, who buys and sells properties and uh, is a builder, he refuses to do any wire transfers at all. In fact, there was a, a flip that we were buying, and uh, one of the requirements was we had to transfer our funds, never meet a closing attorney, and um, uh, we had to wire earnest money and then the full funds. And he was like, then I'm not buying it because we don't know where that's going. We, we have no way of knowing. So that's one of the things is it, you don't have to do the wire. Now, your mortgage company is not going to be happy when, uh, and some of the closing attorneys. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a closing attorney tell me years ago, I will no longer accept a cashier's check. We'll only take wire transfers. Then my suggestion there is to get another closing attorney <laughs> and have your lender partner with you for these situations because this is too common. That closing attorney is not going to write your client a check back <laughs> because it was convenient right. for them. <laughs> right. And they don't want to be part of a secret service ongoing investigation either. Right, right. Um, and one of the tips that Kent gave us was he said, look, no real estate agent is going to make their email secure. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably just not going to go through what a title company goes through and the expense to to make it secure. So the best thing that we can do is change our passwords a lot. And um, as soon as you get, and we get these three or four times probably a month, as soon as you get an email that says have an offer for you and you know you haven't communicated to that agent and they haven't shown your property. I got one from April Sharp one day. She sent me, hey, I've got an offer for you. And I'm like, hmm, no, she doesn't. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I just talked to you yesterday. Right, right. <laughs> so um, delete it immediately and then change your passwords. So those are a couple of uh, mm -hmm. tips that um, we can use and just kind of know who you're dealing with. It's okay. Like she was saying for that closing attorney, sure, she was kind of lenient. Well, you know, they have a relationship. Um, <laughs> here's why. I don't want you to close with that closing attorney. Um, and this is why I want you to close with this title company or this closing attorney, because you know that they have been secure. And like Paige said, have, you know, have that conversation with people up front. So um, I, I wanted to step in and, and yeah, give a few no. tips there. So yeah, right. oh, scary stuff, y'all. It is worse that when it happens to your client than if it happens to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
anybody ever gone to court over a buyer agency agreement and won? <laughs> so number two. <laughs> okay, so um, this topic is also about when your clients cheat on you. Um, I got a Facebook message two years ago from friends that I had known since I was in college selling Cutco knives. And she said, we are retiring to Lake Martin from Peachtree City. We've lived in this house for 30 years. My husband, who um, loves to fish, wants to be somewhere around Lake Martin. I'm glad you're there. I cannot wait to work with you. Great. Get here as soon as you can. We did it right. We sat down. We did recad. They wanted me to be their agent. We did by our agency. We immediately started looking at houses. We talked about, you may go find your own house online. You may go look for sell by owners. Just let me call them before you do. We worked. We put an offer or two offers on two different houses, and then we found their dream home. And don't y'all hate it when you love your job and your people so much that you're going to get to hear this whole crazy story, but every time I drive by that house, I still go, that's such a great house for them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, it was a for sale by owner, worked it great. It was beautiful. It was contingent upon the sale of their house in Peachtree City, and as we are narrowing down on the deadline of the expiration of this date, we can clearly see that their house is not going to be under contract in time. He says, sorry, Paige, we're just going to end this. I don't want to extend that contract over Red Rover. Awesome. A week later, I get an email. Well, this is not really working over here at Peachtree City. We've decided not to move to Lake Martin. You're awesome. Have a good year. Then the next week, it's like 9 o'clock. Have y'all ever done this? I'm sitting there on my back deck scrolling through Facebook and I see that they are having a going away party and that they're about to move to Lake Martin. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so the next day I call him and I'm like, hey, you know, what, what's going on? That's great news. Um, yeah, we did, you know, make it work with that house that you showed us. But, you know, rah, rah, rah. well, that's great. But you will honor our buyer agency agreement, won't you? Buyer agency agreement. What is that? Well, remember, it's this little sheet of paper that says, if I take you to a house and work the offer and you decide to buy it after, even after the contract expires within 180 days, see that thing? We wrote in 180 days. Um, I have still procured the sale and I still get to kind of help y'all work it. Called, he goes, I don't remember that at all. Send it. I did. He immediately sends back an email. And effective immediately. I do not need your services. Thanks. So then I call the for sale by owner seller because I have worked with him since day one and I'm like, what is going on? And he said, oh yeah, he's buying it. He called me and said, hey, she was making $9,800. I'll just split the difference and we'll cut Paige out. And he goes, okay, sounds good to me. Well, of course, everything had already been done. So getting to the meat, um, <laughs> uh, he, I take the information to our association attorney. And I said, look at this big thick file. Do you think I have a leg to stand on? Did I, did this like really happen? And he said, yeah, your case is as tight as a drum. And then we started the court hearing stuff. I did. So, uh, so our case was against the buyer, which is really weird after commission. And it's because it was a for sale by owner, and the seller's obligation was over as soon as the expiration date ended. He wrote a different contract with different terms, but this buyer agency still held my client responsible. If the buyer was, I mean, if the seller wasn't willing to pay commission, who are you? This is a new contract. You're nowhere in here. Who's going to pay? That leaves for the buyer. And it was extremely exciting to get the opportunity to kind of share this with the judge and the other attorneys um, that this was the only property that we would have ever had this to stand on. Okay, tell us about court. 
Okay, so it is true. You do think about it all the time from the minute that you, um, you know, decide you have a case. And it's also true that the minute you call an attorney, they start charging you. So um, they willfully took my case and said it would be about six months. And the day of, after my husband has heard about this, my kids have heard about this, my dog has heard about this, everybody has heard about it. And I, I did lose sleep. I won't say I obsessed. Like you'll hear a lot of people in our CE classes go, I mean, is it really even worth it? I mean, you just can't even work. You can't even eat. You can't even do anything. You can. You can still do all that. But you do think about it a lot, and it really plays with your mind on, am I being a drama queen? Is this really worth it? To, oh, my gosh, they cannot get away with this. You know, this is for real. Um, day of court, it's just like in the movies. There's like a table over there with the bad guys, and then there's our table over here with the good guys, and then there's a judge way up there in the sky, you know, I felt, and this particular judge likes to put a chair in the middle of the room right in front of him. So we were last to go, because a lot of times with the trial, you know, they just go up there, they just talk, they kind of just blah, 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 do their deal, and the judge decides right then what they're going to do. Well, we were the only one that really was like a serious situation, I guess. Well, I mean, they're all serious, but you know what I mean? Like, we're all going to be mat locking it up. And so we waited through all of that, and it was time for me to get in the middle. And for an hour and 20 minutes, they all looked at me and asked me questions about real estate. And I can honestly tell you that I didn't care once I left if I won or lost, because I knew I knew more about real estate and real estate law and contract than anybody else in the room that day. And so, so it's you got some validation. I did. I did. <laughs> but they don't, like, he didn't really come up with his verdict right then because we were throwing him paperwork and we were throwing him emails and it was just like, oh my, I got to go and it'll be two to three weeks before you get my um, decision. So I, I just remember going, I don't really care how it ends up. That rocked. Well, two weeks later... I'm having a rest day at home, if any of us remember what that is, and I'm like, there comes this email from my attorney, and it was this paragraph, and I remember reading it, and then I immediately picked up the phone and said, before I get really excited, am I reading this right? Did we win? And he goes, absolutely. The judge, you know, awarded us uh, 100% of our commission, and then it was happy times. <laughs> so was it worth it? You know, everybody, agents always feel like that's such a no-no, like can't go there, can't sue the client. A client usually has no problem cutting someone out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, someone that they've known most of their life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, was it worth it? It was. I probably will never see a penny of commission. Oh, P.S. So they appealed, and we are going to a juried trial sometime this year. And I, you know, even if they award it to me again, or if they don't, I probably will never see a penny, but I honestly can look you all in the eyes and say it 100% was worth it to me. Especially the day you got the email saying you won. That was a fun day. <laughs> So number three is when you realize that the sale and the deal has nothing to do with money. That is tough. I sold 12 years here in pretty much inner city Birmingham. That was my passion, the revitalization of Southeast Lake. And my average sale and the joke with some of the people in my office was, you know, Paige is a top producer, $75,000 at a time. That was my, you know, average price range. <laughs> I never hardly got a check with a comma in it. And when I did, it was a big deal. We were going to go to Denny's that night or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. And it was first-time homeowners, and it was a lot of FHA products, and it was old historic homes, and it was pigs in the backyard or, you know, chickens or just whatever. It was the creative class, and I was at home in my market. And so at Lake Martin, when, when the deal comes to the time to do the deal and they're willing to walk away on a seven-digit 
you know, property over $15,000, that's mind boggling. So my moment was, it's the night before closing on an $800,000 cash product. And at 630, I get a phone call from the other agent who says, hey, remember those deer paintings that were in the guest bedroom of the upstairs, uh, you know, kind of above those twin built-in bunks? They're gone. And my clients aren't going to fly over in their private jet tomorrow morning unless they're back. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> So I'm like, what are you talking about, dear paintings? And she's, I'm like, okay, okay. Well, this was a situation where it was two families that owned the home, and we were selling the home furnished. And I told them both, beautiful to the nines charm. And I said, whatever it is that you do not want to sell, it is going to be the thing that they want. So before you bring the first person in here, you got to take all that out. So I thought they did. Well, wife, so then we bring in photographer and we you know get it out there then wife number two remembered how special the deer paintings above the built-in twin bunk beds in the guest bedroom upstairs were to her and they were they were a mother's day gift from her two small children and she quietly took them off the wall so I call the husband of wife number two, and I'm like, hey, dear paintings, um, they need to be back on the wall or these purchasers are threatening not to sell. And he's like, oh, no, my wife would just about rather not sell tomorrow than to bring the dear paintings back. Okay, where'd you get the dear paintings? I think I got them at a store in Birmingham <laughs> about five years ago. Okay, I know the store. I know the owner. I've got a sale number. You work on your wife, I'll work on new dear paintings. Well, so he does. He goes to work, he finds, blah, blah, blah. We can't find it. So the next morning, they do come over in their private jet, and they do the walkthrough, and the husband is driving down from Birmingham, and he calls me, and he goes, I want you to know that I slept on the couch last night, and I've got these two dear painting in my trunk, but it would behoove you and me and all people involved for me to come back with these dear paintings in my trunk. <laughs> like, okay. So we get to closing and you do the little crazy chit chat and you drink the water that every closing attorney offers you. And then it was time to put the water down and get down to the elephant in the room. And um, the owner of the shop had done a great job, had tried to find us some nice alternatives, and we, I have my little phone, and I'm showing her pictures, and she had this look perfected, Woo! and she looked at her, she looked at the picture, she turned to her husband and was like, so he looked at me and said, I'll take $400 instead, and I said, sold. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that does not have a piece of paperwork. That does not have a part of real estate law or ethics or anything. It is under the God is great, beer is good, and people are crazy. <laughs> Even if you're in the business all the time for a real long time, we go crazy when it comes to our properties. So um, last... January, Sarah Johnson with Realty South listed my precious dream home at the corner of 4th and 85th in Southeast Lake, 1926 brick, craftsman, old, just love it. And she listed it on a Friday, and the open house was going to be on Sunday, and it was one of those crazy ice storms. She has it anyway. We have people come through. We have multiple offers. One is more than full price. One is FHA, the other is less than full price, conventional. And I, just like every other seller on the planet, didn't even look at anything else on the offer. I was only concerned about what was written in to the line beside purchase price. Got carried away. But that is what our jobs are, is to look in around, inside the margins of all that written stuff. 
Because remember, like we have a state contract. Our contract is five pages long. Birmingham, most of y'all's contracts are like 11 to 15 pages. Last time I looked at Realty South, theirs is like 29 and a half pages long. I mean, every, every written word in there was somebody's oh shit moment. And there is a reason that it is in your contract. And it is up to us to, again, be in front of it, prepare your clients, let them know what the intention was of the buyer who wrote the offer, and protect them. Tell the whole story. So we went, you know, we're all, woo, more than asking price. I talked to Jenny the next day. She's like, well, remember, that's a historic home, almost 100 years old. Um, there's a real good chance that that appraisal on an FHA could screw you up because you're stuck with that appraisal for six months. And I was like, oh, I forgot that part. So they wanted to do something, some kind of change in the contract, which opened the contract up and we were able to move to our backup. And there's a whole lot in between there. <laughs> but it worked out. Yeah, it worked <laughs> You know, we have all these stories, and here we are again, ready to do it again, you know? I mean, we know that just the term, I want to buy or sell my house, turns people into crazy freaks. And we sit with this mountain of paperwork, and it gets more and more every year. And we, we it's, you know, it's a lot to do. And I just, here you are. You know, you took time in the middle of a week on a morning, busiest month of the year, busiest year ever in real estate, you know, and here you are. Thank you for coming to hear me cuss. I do just want to thank Jenny for specifying that these were the top five in my business career because if we're going to do my top five personal moments, it's not going to be with coffee and it's not going to be in the atrium of an office building, okay? <laughs> But I'm honored that you're here. And it would last a lot longer. <laughs> right, right. So I'm honored that you're here. And my top five is to encourage you. Because yes, every little or big or catastrophic moment that you all have as this is going on and that you're going to have by the time you hit your destination down 280 or whatever that is, it's just adversity. So my top five moment is when I get a call six summers ago to pick up and move and sell Lake Martin. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, okay, so everybody, everybody told you For like eight years, I've, you know, <laughs> been very active in this revitalization thing of my neighborhood. I've got a one and a half year old and a three year old, Ugh. a husband who is amazing and rocking and rolling. And at the time I owned 52% of the market in my market because nobody else wanted to sell it. I mean, the joke was <laughs> I really didn't have any of those listings. I just put pointers <laughs> in a big circle, you know, it was, it was loving it, crushing it. So we talked about it. It's a major decision. And absolutely, as you can see, we moved to Lake Martin to sell the water. And I had been going there for 25 years to visit my grandparents. But really, all I knew about Lake Martin was how to get there from my house to their house and swim in that little slough. Um, and I'd heard horrible things about how hard it is to break into that market and, um, you know, how it's not the same as selling with Birmingham Realtors and all of this. So we get there, and just like what you do every day is you have to, when you are a real estate agent or a lender, you have to wake up and make up stuff to do, right? I mean, nobody's telling you this is what you do on A, B, C. This is not what you do from 9 to 12 and 1 to 5. Isn't that the beauty of being a realtor because your job is so flexible? My response to that is, yes, I get to choose which 14 hours I want to work today, <laughs> right? So... Um, it just was the biggest learning cliff, I guess, of my life, because by the time we get there, it's Labor Day, we move, we're excited, and everybody goes, Whoop, see ya, see ya next year. And it was a dank, dark, depressing winter for me. So we spent, I had to just get up and make, Lake Martin is huge. It's 880 miles of shoreline. 
the same as like the coast of California. It is six towns and three counties and every, every thing that you are confident in with your real estate life in Birmingham is a little bit different, enough to be annoying or to, enough to make a fool out of you at Lake Martin. But I just want to say, like, it's the same with you. Stuart, you haven't even taken your test yet. You, the world is your oyster. You get to choose, Oak Mountain Mama, what street you want to own, which neighborhood you want to own, which school system you want to own. And you may not know a single person in that school system. Or you may never have sold a house across town if that's where you want to sell. But you do not take no for an answer. And you do not, not do what you want to do, which in a positive way would make you five or six years later look at a crowd of people and go, oh shit, that's what I get to do. So it's all adversity and you just need to get over that shit. <laughs> and I am thankful that you got that phone call because you didn't need me in East Lake or anything about me or even wanted to know me or <laughs> answer a phone call or an email. <laughs> <laughs> but that opportunity got, um, you know, us together, so I'm grateful for it. Um, now, this was all of Paige's brainchild. She wanted to do this coffee chat, and, um, you know, we may end up doing a series with people because we all have really good, you know, oh shit moments in our careers, and um, <laughs> uh, I get to experience a lot of them aside from my personal ones, um, by having clients like Paige, by having clients like Yana and Bonnie and just the things that, um, and, and Jody, I was right there when those hardwood floors were being installed, dying because of the $25,000 appraisal. <laughs> um, and so there's just so much to learn from when you can learn from these kind of situations. That's why I'm thankful to you for being um, willing to share because everybody wants to talk about how awesome they are. And the truth of the matter is, is, is that real estate is more of this, these moments, than um, there are glorious moments. And uh, sure, you know, you're going to the bank and cashing your checks, <laughs> but it's all this kind of work that you put into it to get there. So um, uh, we learned so much today. Thank you for that. And uh, if you'll be looking for some more, we will probably end up doing a series of these and sharing because, again, we learn more from other people's experience. Um, and you did by showing up. Um, then, you know, we can do out there on their own or in some training class. Well, <laughs> So, everybody, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you for sharing. <laughs>